What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to the FIFA 21 Carrier Mode Reveal Trailer Reaction and Analysis and I will tell you guys all the brand new features in FIFA 21 Carrier Mode and this is the biggest improvement that Carrier Mode has seen probably for the last 10 years but I think this year EA finally really listened to the community and yes the improvements could have been bigger but let's appreciate the fact that these are the most new features introduced in one single FIFA new FIFA cycle probably for the last 10 years so let's see the first let's watch the trailer if you are new to my channel make sure to subscribe because i will post daily fifa 21 career mode contact i will go crazy on fifa 21 career mode because i haven't been this excited for career mode in like five or six years probably manage every moment in fifa 21 career mode with a new interactive match sim more control over training and developing your squad and more ways to sign players on the transfer market so the interactive match sim is the first one ready for a whole new way to play out your career the brand new interactive match sim gives you full control when simming matches. Jump in and out of the action when you decide to change the course of the game. Or take charge for key moments to dominate the moments that matter. Keep an eye on match stats and player performance levels and make subs or tactical changes on the fly to influence the outcome of the match. This is the most exciting, the player development. A new player growth system puts you in charge of your squad's development. Spotted a gap in your team? Turn marauding fullbacks into wingers and goal scoring midfielders into false nines with new position training. Oh, what a volley by Bobby and new Firmino! And plans give you control over each player's growth to help you build your squad's attributes to match your style of play. Active training, now this is also a very interesting new feature. Manage your team schedule and train multiple players at the same time with a new activity management system. Choose when to rest and when to train throughout the week as you balance your players' morale and fitness with match sharpness. A new stat that shows you how likely players are to perform at their peak. Then boost it with group training sessions, monitor your players' progression and find that sweet spot with fitness and morale to keep your team firing on all cylinders. Oh, what a goal by Phil Foden against Liverpool, by the way. New transfer options. Whether you're all about the Galacticos or the hunt for the brightest young prospects, new options give you more ways to transfer players and a more realistic transfer market in FIFA 21. Sign players on loan to buy deals and negotiate player swap offers with other managers to bolster your squad each transfer window. Overhauled opposition AI gives you a more intelligent opponent to play against in every match you play. New tackling, player switching and marking logic makes opposition defences harder to break down. And at the other end of the pitch, more intelligent attackers have a stronger understanding of dribbling and passing to keep you on your toes from game to game. With new ways to train, play and make transfers, manage every moment of your career in FIFA 21. I think the last bit, the enhanced AI gameplay is the most important because ultimately carrier mode will be the most fun when it is fun to play and that's where FIFA has fallen short in previous years that uh, playing against the AI sometimes became boring for people I still like to play around with the sliders so it's fun that way but mo for most people they don't really want to do that they want to just experience the gameplay as it is on default sliders and to be having fun that's the most important part so this competitor mode which uh, will uh, basically mix up how the AI plays and it will replicate how real life professional football FIFA players play that will really really enhance I think the career mode gameplay experience and I think gameplay is the most important part if the game is fun to play then many many people will continuously play it throughout the year so now let's deep dive into the new features the first and biggest one that I want to talk about is player development now you can not only develop the major attributes of your players but for the first time in like 10 years finally you can train a weak foot of a player or a skill move of a player especially for attacking players you can even train any player to any new position that you want so if a striker slows down and physically his stats go down uh, in the later stages of his career you can train him to be a center midfielder or an attacking midfielder for another example when you have a right back who has great stats 
but his finishing is a little bit lacking. You can train him up to be a right winger and if you don't want to sign a right winger and you think the right back could uh, do the business further up the pitch like Trent Roxanne-Arnold, it was uh, as an example we saw in the video, you can train uh, Trent Roxanne-Arnold to be a right winger and that would be absolutely brilliant. You can also finally train the work rates of players, how annoying it is when you sign a youth academy player to your first professional contract and he has like one star weak foot and low low work rates. Now that is not a problem anymore because you can train up the work rates of the youth academy players, the weak foot, the skill moves. And also the pitch notes says that much like in real life football, the speed at which players develop depends on their age, their abilities, their potential, their form and their play time. So give a young player with great potential a few games and help him perform and he will turn into a better player at an accelerated rate. Keep him on the sidelines for too long, so not play him and this, this can have the opposite effect. So it's up to you to make the decisions that work best for your team. So basically loaning out the young players who are not good enough yet for your team will be even more important this year. So for example here on the picture you can see Kylian Mbappe. We can train him as a balanced training which means that all his attributes grow at the same time. But you can also train him to be a target man, a poacher, a mobile striker or a complete striker. Probably a complete striker is the best option if you want a player who can do a bit of everything. Mobile striker if you just want to run the channels for him to run in behind. And also a poacher is like a fox in the box that will train up his finishing probably the most. So for example, the complete striker option trains up his finishing, his attacking position, shot power, free kick accuracy, short passing, curve, composure and ball control and also his stamina. And EA finally listened to the community and you can change a player's position if you want. You can train up a player to play any position that you want and I'm what I'm really interested to find out is can you train a goalkeeper to be a center back or even a striker how amazing would that be or can you even train an outfield player to be a goalkeeper i'm not sure about that but i think you can train off uh, a midfielder to become a striker you can train off a defender to become a midfielder and vice versa and in the video that they showed they you could see that for example with trenox ronald you can train him to any given position. So even a striker, a center forward, a right winger, you can train him to be any position that is not his normal position, which is right back. So I'm really, really interested to find out how you can mold your squad, basically not relying all the time on new transfers. You can train up a player to be your next striker if you want from the squad within which are, which is super super exciting especially for road to glory career modes which I which I will definitely do a long road to glory career mode next season and another new feature is the new active training system the, with development plans now focused on the long term attribute growth of the players our new tra training active training system is focused on the overall match readiness of your squad so they introduce a new player performance modifier called match sharpness so each training day you can basically set training days or rest days between matches in the calendar so checking your calendar will be very very important and you can automate this as well selecting between the methods but also you can set each day manually if you want or you will you can let the AI do it for you so Depending on which players uh, play different uh, kinds of uh, career modes, you can do it all, all the time yourself or you can set uh, uh, just uh, for a whole month. The AI will select uh, like full training every day or maybe training and rest days makes day, makes day in or just very few training days. You can select it however you want. So multiple players can now participate in each training drill depending on the drill type allowing you to involve up to 15 players in each training day which is super exciting so previously you could train a maximum of 5 players at the same time now you can train as, mo as many as 15 players in each training day, day each session consists of different training drills um, and you can improve a specific area defense, passing, dribbling, shooting or set pieces 
Training days will always be pre-populated with the appropriate drills and players based on the active team sheet, but you can always take control and edit them should you wish to fine-tune your training day outcome. So for example in this picture you can see inside the zone, dri zone dribbling and basically attacking players are training there and that will improve the match sharpness which is uh, the icon for that is like a little diamond icon and the match sharpness will be for Firmino, Salamani, Origi and Minamino higher but also probably their fitness will go a little bit lower. So you have to be careful not to put too many training days between matches because then the fitness of your starting 11 players might be lower. The match sharp sharpness which indicates how well will they perform in key situations during the matches that will be higher and uh, I think that it will be a delicate balance and I really really hope that this will add another layer to the FIFA 21 career mode experience which I really really lo love. So let's get more specific. Depending on difficulty, training drills consume different levels of fitness. It takes uh, more fitness out for complicated, more complicated training deals. Uh, the maximum sharpness out output would also be more if the fitness uh, costs more. So it's a delicate balance as I said. Getting the highest grade either by playing or simulating a training deal will maximize the match sharpness but uh, fitness will cost the same depending on regardless of the drill result which is very interesting so the training drill no matter what the outcome you can a b you can get a b c d and f rating no matter what rating your training gets the fitness will be the same deducted from the player's fitness so i think maybe in some cases it's worth it to to do your, the drill yourself i think at the first i will try out the training drills myself and then i will just automate it so the the computer can do it for me the more difficult drills are obviously more challenging and we require more skill to obtain a high grade this introduces an element of choice do i want to play it safe and engage in an easy drill that i can ace and get the maximum sharpness for it or risk playing a more difficult drill for an even bigger boost should I manage to get a high, high grade? This is a, also a very interesting. So we can we have seen some examples in the video. Pinpoint crossing, deliver into the box, penalty kick against the keeper, precision penalty, direct free kick, in-game free kick, and also you can have uh, passing drills as you can see, and uh, definitely others, uh, shooting set pieces, defending, dribbling, as we already talked about. So more players in uh, the same training drill means more players get some sharpness for a successful drill, but less players in the drill means a greater sharpness boost per player. So depending on the sharpness of uh, all your players, you have to put them in and out of uh, the training drills each week, which is going to be a very, very interesting management scenario. So player sharpness, this is the brand new indicator which is brand new to FIFA 21 that helps indicate how ready a player is and how ready a team is for a match. A sharp player will have their main attributes boosted and they will perform better on the pitch. So sharpness can go from 0 to 100, sharpness at 50 means the player is at average sharpness so think of 50 as the baseline sharpness between 50 and 100 means the player is sharper than average and their attributes will be boosted and uh, max sharpness which is 100 will get the maximum boost sharpness between 0 and 50 however means that the player is below average sharpness and here his attributes will be weaker so for example for a striker when their sharpness is 100 they get positioning plus 4 finishing plus five to their attributes, ball control plus three, shot power plus three. These are just some examples. And when the sharpness is zero, they get positioning minus four, finishing minus five, ball control minus three and shot power minus three. So you really have to be careful with your starting striker that he gets the maximum sharpness available while also delicately balancing that he doesn't lose too much fitness. 
which is going to be very interesting, I think. Also, EA added a player feedback system to the team management screen, which aims to enable better decision making by surfacing the most relevant information. So, for example, sharpness morale and uh, playing on his preferred position. These are the three elements that impact the player's overall. So be on the lookout for the new sharpness icon uh, next to existing moral icons. This will allow you to spot the players that are in the best condition ahead of the match, which is going to be interesting that you can, if you have two strikers with the same abilities, you can play the striker who has higher match sharpness, so he will perform better. So this definitely adds a new dimension to the man management aspect of the career mode experience. And you can set three distinct types of activities, training day, recovery day and rest day. Rest day basically regains uh, less fitness than recovery day, but, he ha but has a smaller ne negative impact on sharpness. Recovery day Basically, the players get the most amount of fitness, but it also decreases sharpness the most. And training day, of course, decreases fitness, but increases sharpness. So you have to balance all three of them. And you can basically use schedule rules to establish patterns for pre-match days, post-match days and any other days in between matches for two weeks in advance. So you don't have to manually enter each day to be a training day or a recovery or a rest day. You can basically schedule all of that two weeks in advance. And I really like how the menus look because even during the schedule you are having the Premier League background uh, user interface which is awesome and uh, EA said that now all the menus will have these user interfaces if you are playing in the Premier League or the Spanish League or whichever league has unique user interfaces in uh, FIFA 21 career mode. And now let's talk about the new transfer options and improvements. So now you will have finally after many many years a loan to buy option so you can loan in a young player for one or two years and you can insert a clause where you are, uh, are either obligated or you can buy him at the end of the loan spell which I'm super happy about you don't have to send him back to his parent club and then buy him outright you can just uh, at the end of his loan spell just buy him and this was this feature was in a career mode a few years ago so I really I'm really happy that finally EA put it back in career mode it shouldn't have been taken out in the first place but let's forget about that and let's just be happy that finally this is on FIFA 21 career mode also so if you are negotiating with another club the AI will introduce and offer player swap deals so basically not only you can offer a player in a swap deal plus cash they can also do the same with you there are contract renewal improvements and this is what EA said so we have given the AI controlled clubs the ability to perform contract renewals based on the players rank in the club so you will usually not see the top players in a club become free agents it can still happen in some rare cases as top players might not always want to accept contract renewals and also there will be an established youth academy if you sign for a new club when you take on the manager of a club you no longer have to start setting up a youth academy by yourself the club will already have a youth scout hired and a number of youth academy players already in the youth academy the number varies based on the importance of the youth development rating but there's also a chance that one of those players in the youth academy is going to have the potential to become one of the world's best and that's brilliant if you are with a road to glory uh, career mode and you uh, manage a club in the lower leagues they might already have some world-class players in the youth academy that you can promote and play in your first team straight away and also if you pre-order or purchase the champions or the ultimate edition of FIFA 21 you will be entitled to a homegrown talent player as part of your youth academy when you create your career mode save one player with high potential will await you in your youth academy this player will have the same nationality as the club and new stories around his performance will call out his upbringing as a local player that grew up close to the club I mean this was kind of in career mode previously when you basically had the scout future star that you could buy uh, with points uh, from the FIFA hub but this time I mean th those uh, players will be was they were random nationalities but this time 
if you are managing an English club there will be an English homegrown talent and I like this uh, this addition really that they will be able to the commentators will talk about it that he is homegrown and you can basically make him a superstar at your club we have to talk about the new financial takeover setup within the setup of a new career mode save you can set the amount of cash you want your club to receive if you opt for a financial takeover so whether you want to give your club an incredible 500 million pounds to spend or start with next to nothing you can customize your experience how you want to and also finally ea increased the negotiation strictness well you have the option to increase it some people always enjoy the fact that we let you build a star studded team without any limits but others might feel like this uh, is not realistic it breaks authenticity so instead of picking one of the two approaches we figured that the best way to go is to allow you to choose how you want to set up your career so strict negotiations means that clubs won't be interested in taking offers from a rival club players won't be interested to move to a lower ranked league or club that they have a grudge against players with the one club tra player trade won't be interested in joining another club and you won't be able to approach players that signed to a club for less than a year I will enable this in almost every carry mode that I do on FIFA 21 and I really hope that players like Trenarx Ronald will have the one club trait in their traits and that way you won't be able to see Trenarx Ronald signing for Real Madrid or Arsenal or Juventus because that, that was just annoying and if you don't want this then you can just set the negotiations to lose and basically there will be no restrictions you can sign anybody that you have money for and i'm so incredibly happy about this player retirement we have been changed there is a change retirement logic to trigger only if the player is in the final year of their current contract so never you can never be satisfied when a player is just 32 years old he still has a three-year contract and suddenly he just says at the beginning of the season i'm retiring at the end of the season this will allow star veteran players to push re retirement further and uh, EA also changed the age at which players retire to make the retirement age closer to 40 EA made some, some changes to board objectives to make their requirements more clear especially around the brand exposure objectives we have replaced the objectives around match attendance and season tickets with milestones that the fans would love to see in a club these milestones include reaching a certain amount of wins in a season, a winning streak at home, a run on a one beaten games away and many more. We have also changed the requirements to give youth players playtime to two seasons in order to make sure there's plenty of opportunities for young players to develop. And finally they adjusted the loan and transfer negotiations and they fixed some, some issues where the this was causing the player transfer decision score to be higher than it should be when it comes to transfer offers so here are some elements which will factor into negotiations depending on how much money the club asks for a player so if the player has negotiated a release clause for example if the player is a free agent or if they were listed for a loan or a transfer if the offer is coming from a club in the same country where the player is playing at a comparison between the player's nationality and the country in which the buying club is based and I, I would love to see this I don't want to see English players going to South America all the time the overall of the buying team and the ranking of the league in which they are playing how the players overall compares to the leagues overall that they are playing in the current contract length of the player and the contract length that is being offered the length of the loan if it's a loan how much time the player spent at their current club the more diet time they spend the more likely they are to accept a move so yeah the player who just joined the club like one year ago is not really likely to accept a transfer move to another club and i really like these additions it will just make career mode more realistic more impressive and also if the buying club is using a formation that features the player's preferred position or not for example if you want to buy a cdm but you play a 442 formation without a designated cdm sl slot then the player won't be likely to sign for your club because he will just ask 
where am I going to play boss and also EA added broadcast improvements which I'm super happy about so full, uh, full uh, refresh of uh, the French League 1 and League 2 overlay packages iconic atmosphere following the steps of uh, Liverpool's You Will Never Walk Alone or Man City Real Madrid more clubs will have their ample endems implemented for FIFA 21 like Chelsea, Dortmund, AC Milan, Atletico Madrid and also authentic goal music this applies when playing at home and scoring for example Chelsea, Dortmund and Inter Milan will have goal music playing in the stadium when you score a goal at home and also new localized stadium announcers playing in different countries across Europe will feel more authentic because they will have uh, different languages announcing the goals and everything French, Italian, German and Spanish which is really really awesome new broadcast stories which will be picked up by com commentators during the matches so your managerial club debut the manager of the month award winner debut of a high profile youth academy player milestones for matches played matches won as a manager important player returning from injury and player facing his previous clubs new team TFOs uh, will be also included and you will have the interactive match simulation I didn't really want to talk that much about it because I don't really like to simulate games and I think the majority of career mode players like to play the majority of the games but this will be a fun new addition that you can jump in at any time during the match simulation and you basically see the action just like on football manager and you can jump in when there is a goal scoring chance when there is a penalty or if you you think the team is not playing too well you can adjust the tactics by a push of a button which I really really like you can instantly jump in and out of games depending on whether the game is going to your liking or not which I think is a very very interesting and a very good feature I won't be using that much this feature maybe in pre-season I will try it out but during the season I like to play every game that's that's the main part of career mode for me gameplay and I really hope that gameplay will be even more fun on FIFA 21 I can't stress this enough it is fun for me on FIFA 20 I still play career mode because of the sliders that I can adjust and make the games challenging enough and hard enough and rewarding but if you have competitor mode and the AI is playing like a professional FIFA player that will add just so much improvement so much more fun into the gameplay of FIFA 21 career mode that I think uh, we will not get bored of it during the whole season at least that's what I'm hoping for and that's it for this FIFA 21 carrier mode new features video I really hope that you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching have a nice day see you later good night